Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Roll and Move Reviews. My name is Kirk, I'm your host. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to talk about a little card game you may have heard of by now, and that is Smash Up from AEG. Smash Up's a pretty unique game, it's kind of hard to describe. Uh, it's not quite a deck builder, you can call it a shuffle builder or a deck masher or something like that, but it's something that's fresh and new that we really haven't seen before, so let's take a look and see if it's any good. You begin the game with a faction draft, the base game comes with eight of them. You have dinosaurs, and ninjas, and pirates, and you got robots, and zombies, and wizards, aliens, and tricksters. So you'll do a snake draft, which means player one gets the fir first pick. He'll take the aliens, player two goes, then player three, then player four makes their first pick, and you work your way back up. So player four goes again, then player three, then player two, and player one gets la first pick, but also last pick. Once you've picked your two factions, you shuffle those two decks together, and you are ready to begin. You're going to start the game with a certain number of bases on the table. The goal of the game is to break these bases and to score the points for them. Here's what a base card looks like. You have your title. Right here is your break point. That's how much total power you have to have there for it to break. We'll talk about that in a second. Here is your point values. So first place, whoever has the most power will score that much. Whoever has second most power scores that. Third most has that. Then you have some game text on there uh, that will take effect for that base. There are two what you would call home bases for each faction in the base deck. Uh, the game text usually gives a small advantage to whoever the home faction is, but it's something that usually helps or hurts everyone for the most part equally. How are you going to break the bases? Well, let's take a look at the decks we got. We have zombies and we have dinosaurs. That sounds pretty terrifying. And the way things are going, that might be the plot line for the next Jurassic Park movie. At this point, nothing would surprise me. So we'll shuffle these together. And we're ready to play. On your turn, you see the two types of cards you have are actions and minions. And on your turn, you can play one action and one minion. And it's that simple, really. Uh, the actions just have different game effects, but your minions are where you get your power down on the base. You see this guy has two power, also has some uh, game text as well. But you play that down on a base, and now I have two power on that base. And we continue to play. Uh, everybody would play different cards down. We get different uh, factions would play their minions down. Uh, you could play other actions on the. You could play them on the minions. You could play them on other actions. You could play them on bases. But once at the end of a turn, when you hit that 23, when you hit that break point, the base is going to break. You count up, count up the total power, and whoever has the most power again scores the highest amount of points, and you go down the line. The game's that simple. First person to 15 total points is going to win the game. When I was first told about Smash Up and had the game explained to me, to be honest, it sounded a little lame. Uh, first of all, it just felt like it was going to be a giant math problem, like, okay, we'll add up, and whoever adds up the fastest gets the points. And besides that, it sounded like it would be one of those games where it's just meant to be funny and silly, and at its core, there's not a whole lot of game. Uh, just more everybody's supposed to be sitting around and laughing, and I'm not a big fan of those types of games, so... I wasn't that interested. Because of that, I was a little late to the party on Smash Up. It took me a while to get into it. And maybe you feel that way. Uh, maybe the game just sounds kind of boring or simple to you. And even watching my little playthrough there, uh, that might have looked really simplistic. If that's the case, I'm with you. I understand. I feel you. Because I was there too. Regardless, you want to give this game a chance. Because the fun of the game does not lie in the rules and the mechanics. The fun is in those factions and the combinations you make. Uh, first of all, the factions are awesome. Uh, each one really feels like what it's supposed to be. You know, the ninjas go around sneaking up on people, assassinating, running away. The zombies just don't stay down. The cards keep coming out of your discard pile. The pirates sail around from different bases and do different things and run away and, and move on. So every faction feels like what it is, and they're so simple and so iconic, if you want to put it that way, that uh, right away you can latch on and say, okay, this makes sense, I know what's going on here. Then you start putting them together, and that makes them even more fun, because now you just have two crazy, mixed-up 
factions that really don't make sense, probably shouldn't be together. You know, what are what are dinosaur ninjas? That doesn't make any sense. But you put them together and, and, and you play them, you see what happens. Uh, and that's really a cool part of the game. You know, you can sit around and kind of come up with a story, how your factions got together and what they mean and who they are. And uh, the whole thing is just a lot of fun that way. Once you start playing and uh, putting these together and playing more, you learn that there is some depth of strategy to the game because of the different combinations you make and how different factions complement each other. So uh, there's a ton of replayability. Uh, even if you, I know a lot of people have played this and the first time they played it, when they didn't really know what was going on, they just randomly drafted two factions. They put them together and they didn't work too well together and they kind of turned off to the game. I encourage them, play again, you're going to find something you like. And it really is a potato chip game where uh, most of the time, once you've played once, you're going to want to play again. Because you're either going to try both your, your, your two factions again together, or maybe you liked one and you want to try something else. Or you saw two played by somebody else and you want to try those. Uh, but once you play, you're going to want to play again. Especially once you mix in the expansions, uh, it just it goes on forever. The game can just, it's just infinite. There's so many combinations, you're never going to play the same game twice. Uh, it's a great game. Uh, no matter what level you're at, if you're a serious gamer, there is, like I said, a lot of game there. It's not going to be your meat and potatoes on game night. It's not going to be the, the main game you play, but it's a good early game, late game, a little, uh, I don't want to call it filler. I think it's a step above filler, but um, it's a good, you know, add-on game for the night. Besides that, if I'm getting together with a group of non-gamers or people who dabble with games, and I know that... I'm going to have an opportunity to pull a game out. If it's a small enough group, I'm bringing Smash Up. Uh, this is the game I'm bringing along with me. Just because I know it's a game that I can quickly get people to play and get people turned on to. Uh, first of all, because of those simple uh, rule set, you're not going to be bogging people down with a ton of rules. It's just real basic to teach. A couple minutes, they know how to play. Secondly, because the factions are so, like I said, iconic and they capture what they're supposed to be, Everybody knows what a pirate's supposed to be like. Everybody knows what a wizard's supposed to do. And the factions capture that so well that right away people can latch on to them and uh, enjoy playing them and know what they're supposed to be doing with them. So it's a great game, like I said, no matter what level you're at. My only problem with the game is that it is a four-player max game, and it feels like something that you should be able to play with a bigger group, and I'd love to be able to play it with bigger groups. Uh, with the base game... Obviously, four is the max because that's you only have enough factions for four. Once you start putting expansions, I have heard, and I know people play with five or six. I've read really mixed reviews on how well that works out, and I've been hesitant to do it myself because I don't want to give people a bad impression of the game. I heard it bogs the game down, makes it longer, and I don't want people to walk away from this game feeling that way because when you play it with the right number of players, it is spot on, and it's, it's none of those things. It's not slow, it's not bogged down, it moves very quickly. So I don't want to give people a bad impression with extra players, but I wish there was an official variant where you could play with more. Other than that, it's a fantastic game, really fun. Like I said, no matter what level of gaming you're at, if you're an experienced gamer, if you're a new gamer, a, a casual gamer, or if you're an experienced gamer who wants to introduce games to casual or new gamers, definitely a game you want to have in your collection. Um, like I said, there's a ton of expansions out now, and this is a game you can just expand forever. I'll be talking about those in the future as well. I definitely want to re review each expansion and cover what those do. But even the base game, it's a great place to start, and definitely what I recommend. Smash up. Okay, everybody, thanks again for watching this episode of Roll and Move Reviews. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section. As always, if you're looking to buy Smash Up, if you're looking to buy Smash Up expansions, if you're looking to buy games that have nothing to do with Smash Up, be sure to check out alteregogames.net. You're going to get great deals no matter what game it is you're looking for. Please be sure to uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and if you want to contact me directly, please email me at rollandmovereviews at gmail.com. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Have fun out there.